In the history of design, typography, also referred to as type, has established such a massive impact in the design world. In the terms of visual communication design, typography is the technique of using text to make copy clear, legible, and visually appealing to the viewer while also attempting to convey a message. By the 20th century, typography began to rapidly progress, creating such meaningful and passionate movements that still inspire those in the present, such as avant-garde and modernism. In today's video, we'll be discussing two specimens that have certainly made their mark within the design world and still influence artists to this day. Beginning with the first specimen, we will be discussing the Earth Day Alphabet series and its origins. So disclaimer, I, uh, I've been having a hard time pronouncing these names, so if I pronounce them wrong, I apologize. So the Alphabet series was first created by a Russian designer and sculptor named Roman D. Turtov, who was also known by his artist name, Earth Day. He was born in Russia on November 23rd, 1892, and his family had an extensive military background due to his father being a Russian admiral. Like all parents who have high expectations, his father dreamed of Earth Day joining the military and following in his footsteps. However, as he grew up, he began to find himself drawn to the arts and found passion in fashion and design. Creating his first design at the age of six, his mother seemed to know he was destined for greatness and supported his dreams. At the age of 20 in 1912, Earth Day moved away from his parents and permanently resided in Paris, France, in order to start and succeed in his design career. Within a year, he ended up collaborating and working with a famously known theater costume designer named Paul Poiret from 1913 to 1914. Soon after, he was recruited and hired by magazine Harper's Bazaar to work as their monthly cover designer in 1915. Slowly getting into the alphabet, years passed and Earth Day has been gaining experience from the magazine as well as creating costume designs for theater. However, Earth Day explained how, after a successful gallery exhibition called Gallery Charpentier, he formulated this idea of a human alphabet piece, in which he already pictured how the final product was going to look like. Earth Day first started this process in the year of 1927, and he originally planned to have the alphabet finished on time. However, due to his position at Harper's Bazaar and his costuming work at the theater, the process took much longer than expected and it was not ready for exhibiting at the second Gallery Charpentier show. Several years go by, Earth Day finally succeeds in completing the alphabet in 1967 upon the request of exhibiting it in the Grovens Venor Gallery in London, resulting in a total of 40 years. Now moving on to the second specimen, we will be discussing the Helvetica typeface and its poster. So for all you in the class, I'm pretty sure you guys know what Helvetica is, but for those who don't, Helvetica is a well-known used typeface created by a designer named Max Meendinger, who is commonly known as a Swiss typeface designer. He was born in Zurich, Switzerland in 1910, and Meendinger's most popular and acknowledged accomplishment was creating the Helvetica typeface in 1957. Now, I have an important question for all you guys in the class watching this video. Answer this one question for me. Is Helvetica an original typeface? As in, was this font created from scratch? Did you all guess the correct answer? Because I sure didn't. The answer is no. Helvetica is not an original typeface. The typeface originated from another typeface, which was called Standard in the United States and in Germany, I'll post the name in the PowerPoint, I can't pronounce it unfortunately, but um, while it was created by Max Meendinger, his boss Edward Hoffman commissioned Meendinger to create a more up-to-date sans serif. So it was soon designed and launched in 1957, which only took one year to create, and as of present day, Helvetica is still widely known and it is slash was used by many brands such as Apple and Microsoft due to its modern-like appearance. Now getting down to the compare and contrast, when examining both specimens, one can articulate that Earth Day's alphabet and the Helvetica type are two completely different typefaces. While they're both classified as 2D specimens, they have also created a significant impact within the design world with their distinctive art styles. Taking a deep dive into the alphabet series, Earth Day was named as one of the kings of avant-garde style, and this work definitely showcases that unique and unusual style. Looking at it more closely, the type is seen as decorative and displays many bold yet organic and flowing lines along with like geometric shapes. And this was most likely due to Earth's past fascinations with shapes and the forms of the human body while in action as he was growing up. 
As a young child, he originally wanted to become a designer after taking part in ballet. And due to his love for dancing, he became captivated by the motion of the human body. And in my opinion, that truly does reflect in his piece. I believe that this work carries so much meaning. Although no one really knows whether each letter holds a specific meaning, I think that due to his passion and experience with both dance and art, he combined both of these elements in order to create every single letter, every piece, every, every work within his like art career. In comparison to Urte's alphabet, the Helvetica typeface is definitely classified as more modern. Its design can be described as simple, minimalist, it has more straight lines, and back in the early days of design, this typeface was seen as like a brush of fresh air compared to the usual decorative avant-garde inspired works that were popular during the 1950s. However, I believe that unlike the Urte's alphabet, Helvetica doesn't carry any specific meaning in its letters whatsoever. There is only created meaning when combining the letters to create words and sentences, which in visual communication design is known as phonetics. The specific reason is also why I believe that Helvetica itself is considered as a symbol because the typeface itself is used to create words and those words are classified as symbols because they provide visuals of a subject that is named. All in all, while both specimens come from two separate art movements, Urte's alphabet series and Helvetica has made such far progression and helped create such a massive impact developing the world of design how it is today. Due to its experimental and unique decorative letters, the Urte alphabet separated itself from the traditional typeface classifications and it exhibited a new style that artists to this day can find both self-expressing and inspiring. Whereas Helvetica was the exact opposite, it became such an iconic typeface of its era due to its modern utilitarian design and to this day, it can be found on many logos and websites. That concludes my video essay of my two specimens that I was given for this project. Thank you guys for watching and please like and subscribe to this video if you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, bye.